This is a tutorial on finite element analysis using Fusion 360. It's an introductory tutorial um, and we're going to draw a hook like this which might be used for lifting something, it might be a simplification of something you put on the end of a crane and then once we've drawn it we're going to apply Imagine that there's a weight hanging from it, so apply a force to it in, in engineering terms, and then um, we're going to look and see what the stresses are in the hook and think about whether that's going to break the hook. And once we've done that, um, we're going to try redesigning to optimize this. Uh, and what we're actually going to do is to make the hook as light as possible, um, given certain constraints on how much stress it can handle. So let's uh, start in Fusion 360. Uh, I guess the first thing I'm going to do is just to draw out the hook. Um, I've got a, an image there of the exact dimensions I want. Um, and that's basically what I'm going to use. So start a sketch. Uh, I'll sketch on that plane for no particular reason. You can pick any plane you wanted, I think. And what I'm going to do is draw out the profile. Again, lots of different ways to um, to do this sketch, but this is the one I'm going for. Uh, I'm going to try and draw something like that image that I just put up on the screen. So I need 100 high, uh, 20 wide, 80 back down again, 20 across, 20 up, 20 across, 20 down, and 60 back to where I started um, and that shape that I've drawn on there I hit escape a couple of times just so I could stop drawing lines um, that's this shape here I think give or take these two um, fillets which I'll add in later so we're well on the way um, I'm gonna stop sketch and I will now extrude that uh, different ways to do the extrusion. I'm going to do it symmetrically in case I want to take advantage of the symmetry later. And if I go 10 millimeters each way, I'll have the whole thing be 20 millimeters wide, uh, which is what I want. So I can click OK on that. And that sort of looks like the kind of thing I was looking for. The last thing to add in are those fillets that I talked about earlier. And I'm going to fill it on there and fill it on there and those are both five millimeter fillets in the drawing I was looking at. Okay, that's our hook ready to go. The next thing that I'm going to do is to um, change the material. It, this this will only, we'll only be able to compare results across different models if we're clear what the material is and obviously for real engineering you need to be um, clear about what your material is if you want to find out whether something's going to break or not, which in a way is really what we're doing here. Um, so I'm going to assign this to be mild steel and I will go modify physical material and I think I'll get a drop down list of options, uh, list of options on this right hand box and then somewhere in the list of metals I'm hoping uh, steel hundreds of steels and there's just a very standard mild steel and I drop that onto my part um, so that seems like I've uh, achieved that uh, just wondering if there's any way I can check that that worked I'm sure there is but I can't think of it at the moment well we'll assume it worked and then we'll come back and look later um, because the other thing that I'm going to want to do then I said earlier one of the things we're going to come to do is to um, minimize the mass and um, to do that uh, well, I'll save this as um, FEA hook one and if I right click there on FEA hook one uh, I can find a section called properties 
and uh, that's quite good. That tells me that the uh, mass of my hook, you can see in this uh, drop down box on the right hand side, it's 504 grams and that's about what I was expecting it to be. Uh, I'm just going to make a note of that. I've just opened up a notepad. Um, So we said 504.085, uh, and I'll tab along a bit and do grams as the unit. So it's about half a kilogram that this hook weighs. OK, um, I can hit OK on that, and I'm ready to start doing my finite element analysis. Remember that the finite element analysis is really to tell us the stresses in this part. You know, for example, uh, the definition of uh, stress is force over area in simple cases. But here it's not really clear what force we should be using or what area we should be using. It's not a simple case anymore. And calculating the stress by uh, by hand or by calculation from first principles could be quite tricky, particularly when it comes to the effects of these fillets here, for example. So instead we use finite element analysis, a software tool uh, developed, I think, in the 60s, which um, breaks the part down into lots of smaller um, parts and effectively measures the stresses within each of those smaller parts and how they all interact. And we'll talk later about um, exactly how finite element analysis works. For the time being, it's just important that you begin to see what kinds of things we're going to learn from it. So I'm going to, um, rather than being in the modeling window, we've done all of our modeling, really, we've got the hook we want. I'm now going to say uh, jump to simulation and I want to do, you can see there are all kinds of simulations we could do. Um, if you're getting advanced, you could think about shape optimization, which is really what we're heading towards. But for now, we want to find the static stress. That means if we apply a constant load to the part, what are the stresses within that part? So I've chosen that and I'll hit create study. The three things to think about in finite element analysis, or three places to start thinking about, you always need to define your materials, um, and we've already done that. We've said that this is made out of mild steel. You need to define some constraints. Something needs to be fixed um, in order to make this a statics problem in a way. If you think about it, if uh, eventually we're going to want to apply some forces to this, and um, Newton's second law says that if there's nothing to resist that force, then the whole thing will accelerate according to F equals MA. That's not really what we're modeling here. So we need to apply constraints, which is kind of fixing something in place, and then we apply loads as well. Um, we'll start by looking at constraints. I'm going to add a structural constraint. Uh, I'm just going to close this um, learning about things window that's come up. And I'm going to make a fixed constraint on that surface there. Essentially, that's now saying that surface can't move. I'm just going to check that that is what we were told to do in the instructions. Um, click fix and then click on the top of the hook. Uh, so I think we've done exactly the right thing there, that this surface here is fixed and can't move. OK. Um, so we, we've specified materials, we've specified a constraint, something that can't move, and now we finally add a load. Um, I'm going to apply a structural load. We want a force and we want it to act, uh, again you'll have seen in the diagram on the worksheet, we want it to act on this surface here. Uh, just to be clear, that's this surface in here kind of the inside of the hook, where if you slung a rope over this hook, that's where it would sit. So that's where we want the force to act. You can see we've got these arrows which kind of show us um, the force is going to be distributed over that area, which is good. And um, it's pointing downwards, which is exactly what we want. And so I'm going to uh, say that's OK. And we want to apply a downwards force on this face of 3,000 newtons. And I can click OK. 
and so we've got our loads and we've got our constraint. As the semester goes on and as we work through other problems you'll find how to um, apply different kinds of constraints, different kinds of loads, what all these different options here might mean and so on. But for the time being we really just want to get through to some results uh, so that we can um, start understanding the outcomes of finite element analysis. Uh, so I'm going to try to start with um, not really changing anything else. I'm just going to hit solve. And let's say solve. Sorry, this is going to be a slightly um, tedious bit. I'm just going to pause the video so you don't have to wait. Oh no, there we go, we're done. Um, and now we've got some results. What you'll see, it's important to, to work out what we're actually looking at in terms of results. Um, what you've got here is a safety factor. That's the result that's being shown. Um, and the minimum safety factor is 2.64. You'll see it says this design is marginal. It may be sufficient. And typically you might want a safety factor of 3.0. The safety factor, and again, we'll talk about this in some detail. The safety fi factor tells you how many times you could multiply the load in some sense before the whole thing was going to break. So we could have two and a half times this load and probably it would still work. If we had five times this load that we've got at the moment, we might expect it to fail. Those are the kinds of things we can learn from safety factors. Um, I'm going to switch this to look at stress in the part. Um, it's not quite the same as we the, the diagram that we were given before, um, but you can see quite a few things about what's going on here. First of all, the highest stresses in the part are in this bit, um, like the, the corner of the hook, just where the fillet starts. And I mean, the really important thing to think at this stage is, is that right? Does that make sense? And I guess what you're trying to think is, if I was to take something like this made out of um, some kind of rubber or soft material that I might be able to break, and I applied a load and I just kept on pulling at the load until it broke, where would it break? And the answer is, well, round about there seems about right. Um, that That is the kind of intuitively the weak spot of this design. Um, so that seems quite a good result. We're also finding you've got to go back now and look at this color bar and see what actually the color bar is telling you. Um, red indicates something probably in the 70s in terms of stress. Yellow indicates something in maybe the 50s in terms of stress. So there's reasonably high stresses here as well. The next thing that we've got to think about is, OK, 78 megapascals, is that a big number? Um, and the answer is, well, not really. The yield stress of steel, of this kind of mild steel, is probably something around 250 megapascals, around about there. Um, and so until we get to a stress of 250 megapascals, nothing's going to break. Nothing's going to get outside the elastic uh, region. And I'm sure somewhere if we knew um, we, we could look up the properties of this mild steel, or in fact you could look up the properties of mild steel on the internet to get an exact yield stress. But the important thing here is we're not in any danger of breaking the part. We know the yield stress is somewhere above 200 megapascals and we're not even at 100 megapascals yet. So to um, repeat what I've just said, the highest stresses are these red parts here and they correspond to 78 megapascals which is uh, high stress but not enough stress to cause plastic deformation or to break the part. There are stresses of around 50 megapascals here all down this surface and that might be important. And you'll note for example that this whole region here is uh, dark blue corresponding to a stress, well you know the 
the third decimal place is a 2, that's just a rounding error. Essentially, there's no stress in any of this bit out here because the load is uh, where my mouse is now, the support is up at the top, and so this whole section out here isn't supporting any of the load. Um, okay, so that's kind of uh, everything that we need to, to know about for this. I'm just going to get my notepad back up again, um, and as well as having a weight of 504.085 grams, I guess I should probably have rounded that to, let's just do everything to three significant figures right from the start. So it's 505 grams, and it's got a maximum stress of 78.3 megapascals. Um, and now I've recorded all the useful information there, so um, I can save that for another time. Um, and that looks good to me. I'm going to save. Uh, it's already saved because it, that's how we ran the simulation. Um, Um, so I can save. Um, one thing that I, I realized I can do is to turn the mesh on and off there. Um, don't worry too much about that, but when I said that this is uh, the, this large part, the whole hook, is being treated as a collection of smaller parts, turning the mesh on and off allows you to see those smaller parts. And again, we'll come back later and think about what that means and the ways that you as an engineer can use it to uh, make sure you're doing your job correctly. What I want to do for now though, um, we've got a 505 gram hook that seems okay, the stress is um, less than 200 megapascals and the safety factor is about 2.6. Now what I want to do in this case we're going to try and redesign. Uh, so I'm going to go back to the model and then there are lots of things you could do. I'm just going to do two just to give you some examples. The first, I'm going to put a fillet on there, uh, five millimeters. And the second, um, I'm going to uh, try putting a shell on there. What happens if I do that? No, I'm not going to do that. Actually, that doesn't quite do. And in fact, I'm going to undo that fillet. Um, I might instead uh, put the fillet on there and make it five millimeters, just to show you that that's an available option. Um, and then I am going to do the shell option, which kind of hollows out whatever you're working with. It's a useful one to remember about. Um, and if I make that a two millimeter shell, and click, uh, in fact, let's make it a five. I, I'm really guessing here. I don't know what the right answer is. A four millimeter shell on that. Then you can see what it's done is hollowed it out. Um, and if you took a slice through this bit here, you'd find it's hollowed all the way around. So I don't know if this is any good or not, but I'm going to um, save that as FEA hook 2 and this is the kind of thing that we want you to do is just to to try different ways to reduce the mass of the hook um, and now what I'm going to do is go back to simulation uh, and I've said study and told it to create a new study um, the materials should still be in place. The constraints, I want the same kinds of constraints again, so I'll just do that. The loads, I'm going to add a load on there of 3000 newtons again. And then I'm going to tell it, just check that the mesh looks reasonable, uh, allow the model to compute a mesh for me. That looks similar to before. And now I'm going to try tell it to solve, and you'll see that this is now study two. 
and again I'm afraid it just takes a little bit of time to solve and now we've got a lower safety factor than we had before. You might remember the safety factor before was 2.6, 2.7, something like that. It's gone down. So what that tells us is this is a, a weaker part. It's closer to failing, but that's okay. In this instance, we're aiming for a safety factor of one. Um, and it explains in the document why that is. We've built in a much higher load than we were expecting, and therefore a safety factor of one should be fine. Um, similarly, you can see that the maximum stress for this part, uh, which I've called hook 2, is 110.7 megapascals. So I'm just going to write that in, uh, hook 2. We don't know yet what its weight is, we'll look that up in a second. But the max stress we do know is... 110.7 um, and I'm going with uh, one decimal place you could go for three significant figures if you want I don't really mind about that um, so we have uh, I hope if I just go back to the model and we right click on the hook go to properties we've reduced the weight to 323 grams 323.6 or call it 324 grams 324 um, and in doing so we haven't let the stress go up close to the yield stress and I guess one way to look at it is we haven't got a safety factor which is yet uh, below one and if you get to a safety factor below one you've really got problems um, so that's a kind of overview of what we want to look for in this stress analysis and in this hook analysis. The rules of the comp uh, competition now are how light can you get it? And I'm going to say this area here where the constraint is applied has to stay the same. This area here where the load is applied has to stay the same and everything else is up for grabs. So you can't move that space or change its size or change its position relative to that space. This one and that one have to stay identical. Everything else you can move around or trim or shell or fillet or chamfer or whatever you want to do. Um, you'll see just by sort of trial and error and guessing a couple of things, I got the weight down from 500 and something grams to 300 and something grams. Uh, you should certainly be able to go below 200. Um, that is quite um, straightforward to do you might be able to go below 150 and a couple of people I have seen solutions which get below 100 grams so that's really a, a, a challenging target is to get the weight of this hook below 100 grams and to keep the safety factor above one um, so that's what you're aiming for now and if you get any um, good results, particularly if you manage to get below 100 grams, then do let us know about it. And good luck.